Tides in to dirt south do. Tide, the wash day miracle that gives you the cleanest clothes in town, brings you in person, direct from Hollywood, that zany, lovable clown of clowns, Red Skelton. T-I-D-E, Tide presents Red Skelton. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen. You're very kind to invite us back into your living room again. We um, have a lot of things that happened here this week. <laughs> uh, by the way, we have a bulletin that just came over. Glendale just went through Pasadena. <laughs> <laughs> We're now selling real estate in California by the bottle. <laughs> Did you hear about the two guys sitting in the bar out in the valley, and one of them says, well, here's mud in your eye, and yes, then the wall came. <laughs> My, my place, too, you know. I got arrested. I got to appear in court on Tuesday, you know. <laughs> I went through a, a red light. Of course, I was in my house at the time. <laughs> <laughs> they, my little boy and girl, uh, Richard and Valentina, they, at school this week, they had to recite. And I said to Richard, I said, what are you going to recite? He says, I'm going to recite a little poem called, Come, come, me turtle dove, we'll throw a, a skunk in a tunnel of love. <laughs> Valentina says, I said, what do you recite? She said, I got to tell a bedtime story about Little Red Walking Hood. I said, who? She said, Little Red Walking Hood. Now, we made a recording, and, and this is about the way it went. She says, once you point it twice, I mean, twice you point it once, <laughs> there was more than six, there was two. <laughs> Little Red Walking Hood was riding through the dandelions when she came across a ferocious wolf. Where goes thou, asked the wolf. To my grandmother, who's sickest and better, said Little Red Walking Hood. <laughs> May I go with those? asked the wolf. No, said Little Red Walking Hood. I always travel alone. Very well, said the fox, the wolf. <laughs> you go your way, Kate, and I will duplicate. <laughs> now, the, uh, the fox being the uh, fastest of two, the uh, wolf rather, he takes a, a yellow cab to the grandmother's house, and he arrived there first, and he found her sickest and bitterest, as Little Red Walking Hood had said it. And he sprang, he sprung. He jumped upon the bed. <laughs> and he ate the grandma. And he laid in her steed, her, ste her plate. And there was also a big bunch of bananas beside the bed, and the wolf ate them. And there was a stool, and the wolf ate the stool, too. The, the, the doctor sat on. Pretty soon, little Red Walking Hood come tripping through the woods, and she opened up the door, and she fell on her face, dead, drunk. <laughs> In the basket she carried on her arm, she had the latest delicatessens of the season, such as Hagen and Hay, Puerto Rican rum, <laughs> and a bite of vodka. She walked over to the, to, the, to, the, to the wolf and she says, Grandma, my, what a big nose you got. That's the way she put it to him. She said, my, what a big nose you got. And the, and the wolf said, better to smell you with, my dear. He says, but what big ears you got. And he said, better you smell you with, my dear. Hear you with, my dear. <laughs> and with that, he said, what big teeth you got. And the fox said, the wolf says, better to eat you with, my dear. And with that, he sprang, he sprang, he jumped out of the bed. <laughs> and he started to grab Little Red Walking Hood, and she screamed at the top of her voice, help. <laughs> a couple of woodmen passing the house about a mile and a half away heard the scream. Did they not? <laughs> yes, they did not. So they ran in. They open up the door and they pull out their guns and they cut the wolf open. And there, to their amazement and surprise, they found the grandmother sitting on the stool, restored to her health, selling bananas for 25 cents a bun. <laughs> We had a, um, uh, uh, a scene that we were supposed to do, but the set didn't show... Say, uh, how do you get this stuff off? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Go ahead. See, last week he was out here, and I put that all over his face, you see. Mm. Well, another writer bit the dust. <laughs> we had a uh, scene where Willie Lump Lump comes home, and uh, he's supposed to go into his house. But due to the fact that the rains, we couldn't get it shipped in. So we'll, you'll have to imagine the door, the window, the icebox, the stove, and everything, and we'll do the scene without it. Could we open up? <laughs>
my plaque. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. A uh, few days ago, I happened to be in the uh, drugstore, and uh, they sell all kinds of... Oh, by the way, I'd like to meet my good friend, uh, David Rose, ladies and gentlemen, America's foremost conductor and composer. Come on, David. <laughs> the reason I do that, if I don't bring him out, little Melanie, his little daughter, and Betty, they shut us off right away. <laughs> now they watch the rest of the show. We were in the drugstore, though, uh, having a Coke, and we were watching different people, how they came in and out of the drugstore, and with your permission, I'd like to try and show things that happen in our great American institution, the drugstore. <laughs> First, you have a guy that's always in a hurry. One of these guys. <laughs> you got any mouse traps? Yes, yes, we do. Give me a mouse trap, will you? Don't go away! Don't go away! <laughs> well, don't stand there. Give me the mouse trap. I'm in a hurry. I got to catch a bus. Well, I'm sorry, but we don't have any that big. Okay, man. <laughs> <laughs> then we have the, uh, the, uh... <laughs> hey, we're going to miss you around here. <laughs> Then we have the typical drugstore cowboy, one of these guys. <laughs> Give me two nickels for a dime, will you? <laughs> she lost her job in a dime store because she couldn't remember prices. <laughs> Nothing she gives me. I <laughs> okay, there's no pinball machine anyhow. <laughs> Nothing. <laughs> Tilted, I didn't touch it until it came on my <laughs> Then we have a very bashful fellow coming into the, uh... You're getting better, son. <laughs> then we have a very bashful fellow coming into the drugstore. One of these type of guys. Yeah. Oh, the set's wrong. We gotta move. <laughs> <laughs> well, they threw away the best part. <laughs> Here, this has gotta be... Oh, I'm sorry. Did I hurt you? Huh? You all right? It's all right. It looks good. Been both ways. <laughs> Are you all right? I'm sorry. You got you got nine more. What? <laughs> what the matter? You're in a drugstore. Get yourself fixed up. Go ahead. <laughs> what the matter? Hey, 
Hey, a bashful fellow coming into, into a drugstore. A bashful fellow. <laughs> How do you do, miss? Well, hello. What can I do for you? Isn't it warm today? <laughs> I hadn't noticed. Yeah. <laughs> what can I do for you? I'll wait for one of the men clerks. <laughs> you can tell me what you want. What? You can tell me what no, you want. No, I... <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, 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 no. Now, you oh can... please let me go. You embarrassed. Oh, please, oh, no, no. Tell let me, me what you want. Let me go. <laughs> now you can tell me what you want. You won't tell anyone? No. Cross your heart, hope to die? I cross my heart and hope to die. I want a bottle of airwick. <laughs> Skelton's Scrapbook, The Clean Fighter. Now look, McGurk, you haven't got a thing to worry about. The fight's been okay by the State's Athletic Commission, and everything in all the papers is signed, you see what I mean? Hey, golly, Flower, hurry up, will you? The semi-final is on. You only got a couple of minutes. Step on it. I'm so I said to this guy here, so... <laughs> Start talking, I'll find you. Where you at? I smell you, but I can't find you. Oh, there you are. How you been? Now you be. Oh! What's the matter with you, anyhow? Who are you? Me? Yes. Why, I'm the fight manager. The what? The impresario. The what? The impresario. I am P. Oh, I know you, yes. Hey, are you Cauliflower McPug, the pugilist? I'm the what? Cauliflower McPug, the pugilist. A pugilist? Yes, P U. That's me, yes. Come on, we've got to weigh in, and I want to be there to check you to see you're on the level, see your no. weight's right. I'm all right, yes. Yeah. Be sure and put this in my glove for a good luck. Will I'll you? take care of it. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, you know, the, oh boy, a flock of them flew over that. <laughs> and you know, uh, uh, you know, I, I had to rinse out a few things, you see. I'm known as one of the cleanest fighters in the ring, and that's why I use Tide. T-I-D-E. I can spell you, see. Oh, D-I-D-E. I die, see. It gets close cleaner than any soap. Yes. yes. And moist prints come out dazzling bright. Oh. And it also, all sorts of clothes that get clean at that right there, you oh, see. Yeah. No, no, no. Don't anybody move till I find my nose. What happened? <laughs> oh, there it is. It fell on my mouth again. <laughs> You know, I had a little trouble with my nose. I can't breathe through it, you oh, know. Oh, yeah? Oh, no. I had to go breathe through my ears, oh. you know. <laughs> oh, brother. What, Dad? Oh, brother. Are you well, I didn't know that we were related. <laughs> <laughs> uh, careful, boy. Careful there. You answer know, the phone, will you? The phone's ringing. What, Dad? I say the phone is ringing. Will you please answer it? Boy, I hope I never get that punchy. <laughs> 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 oh, the phone is ringing. <laughs> hello? Hello? I got that from an English movie. Oh. Hello? <laughs> hello? Hello? Are you there? <laughs> How about that? A canary answered the phone, huh? <laughs> it's probably Speedy. That's who that was. That was probably Speedy. Yeah? Who's Speedy? He's the guy that tapped me on the back of the head, but when I turned around, he's never there. <laughs> Shrimpboats are coming! <laughs> hey, you better quit fighting. You're gonna get hurt. Who's gonna get hurt? Me you get hurt. I never get hurt, boy. I never get hurt. Murdered, maybe, but never get hurt. I'm <laughs> a pretty tough guy. Let me show you a list of the guys here I can lick, boy. This will surprise you. Toot Shore, since High Gardener, since Granlin Wright, Jack Dempsey, Gene Fowler, Jack Cummings, Dirty McGurk. Hey, uh, you can't Mickey lick me. Walker. Who can? You can. What got them flamingos? <laughs> I can't lick you? No, you can't lick me. You mean it? Yes, I mean it. I can lick them other guys. I don't care who else you can lick, you can't lick me. You mean it? Yes, I mean it. Okay, I'll rub your name off. <laughs> <laughs> well, if it's that funny, I'm gonna sit out there and watch it. <laughs> 
<laughs> See, you're a tough guy, huh? Here, I, I dare you. Caught that line. Caught that line. I dare you. Go on. Just caught that. Now you're on my side. You can't hurt me. <laughs> Oh, good heavens, you know. Hey, you know, you think I'm gone, huh? Really punchy, huh? Uh-huh. <laughs> Enter the phone, will you? There's no phone ringing. This guy's really gone, boy. <laughs> you want to see them rattlers down at that gymnasium? Oh, yeah. oh them poor tuckers, they're really gone. Yeah. They go up to the second floor, see, and slide down the banister. Them <laughs> poor tuckers. <laughs> <laughs> well, tell me something. What happened when they slid down the banisters? Anything? We're going to meet you around here. <laughs> yeah, You're supposed to say, uh, how, uh, what's wrong with that? And then I say, there's no second floor in that gymnasium. Well, there is. Get your check. You're done. <laughs> Why, I hope I never get as punchy as you, boy. <laughs> There's no, there's no second floor in that gym. Oh, yeah. I know. I got a splinter sliding down the banister myself. Oh, yeah. Well, if there's no second floor, there can't be a banister. So how did you get the splinter? We were. Ha <laughs> <laughs> if one of the writers is listening in, would you phone me an answer real quick? <laughs> how did we have to uh, uh, slide down? We were having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> oh, brother, let's go back. <laughs> Hey, you know, you know, Dirty McGurk, you know what? Uh, don't call me that name. I don't like it. Well, why, why do you call Dirty McGurk? You know? I don't know, but don't call me. Well, I name. know why. Look at you. You ought to get you a box of this stuff, boy. Clean yourself up. You'll be one of the cleanest fighters in town. <laughs> well, yeah. Get clothes dazzling bright. Wash prints come out dazzling bright. And glass, you got a glass yard, comes out sparkling bright. <laughs> oh, gee, they can call me Dazzling McGurk instead of Dirty McGurk. Yeah. <laughs> Pardon me. <laughs> Skelton Scrapbook Parking and Sparking Somewhere on the outskirts of every town and hamlet in the country is a very special place. It is known by different names, but all of them mean the same. Lover's Lane. Visitors to Lover's Lane are of all kinds and types, rich and poor, from one side of the tracks or the other. Their vocabularies may vary widely, but each is saying exactly the same thing. Darling? Yes, Reggie? Isn't the moonlight beautiful? Its radiant beams light your face till you look like a goddess. Hey, uh, shrimp boat. <laughs> What'd you want, Stagnus? Get a load of that moon. Ain't that something? They say that the moon is bigger than the earth. If the moon is bigger than the earth, how come it didn't keep the rain off? <laughs> Another writer bit the dust. <laughs> You know, when the moon hits your kisser like that, you look like a movie star. Gee, hideous from there? No, <laughs> Humphrey Bogart. <laughs> Darling, would you think me an impetuous young man if I kissed you? Oh, Reggie, I want your kiss more than anything, but, well, I hardly think this is the place. Well, why pretend? Hey, Mushmouth. <laughs> Puck her up and give me a goober, huh? <laughs> Man. You try and kiss me and I'll smack you over the noggin with my welding torch. Ah, why pretend? <laughs> Come on, give us a kiss. What? Give us a kiss. Who are you with? I got... <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna miss you around here too, kid. <laughs> Come on, how about a little kiss, huh? <laughs> Give me my bubble gum back. Huh? Stop acting like a wolf. Who's a wolf? I ain't no wolf. I'm there. The people say I'm a wolf, but I'm not.
Darling, hadn't we better go? That caviar we had for dinner's made me awfully thirsty. Oh, we don't have to leave. I have the tea right here. Oh. <laughs> Them hot dogs were murder. I'm thirsty. That wants something to drink in here. <laughs> Coffee keeps me awake, you know. No, thanks. Okay, don't say I didn't offer you none. See, I've always wanted one of them English cars. You have, huh? Well, here, help you sell. <laughs> Darling. Yes, dear. Feel the stillness. It's so quiet. Mm, and it's so restful. Listen to the frogs. Do you know what they're saying? We're in love. We're in love. Hey, Sergeant York. <laughs> Boy, it's sure dead around here, ain't it? It's like an open-air morgue. Yeah, you've been seeing too many of them owl movies. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What's that? <laughs> Don't look so innocent. <laughs> <laughs> that frog sounds like he's got a man in his throat. Gwen, I, I have something I must tell you. Now, don't tell me you found someone else. No, but I'm afraid it'll be just as shocking. You remember that $100,000 that my grandmother left? Yes, it was to have been our security for happiness. Well, I'm afraid it won't be. You see, I, I lost it all in the stock market. Say, uh, Bin's a dream, Gertie. <laughs> I got something to spill to you. Yeah? What is it? Oh, um... Don't tell me you've been caught peeking in windows again. <laughs> no, I stopped that peeking Tom stuff. You see, they caught me. I was peeping when I should have Tom. <laughs> well, what I want to tell you is you, uh, you remember that, uh, 35 bucks I hijacked from your grandmother? Yeah, it was our nest egg. I got news for you, it hatched a little too soon. <laughs> I got in a crap game with some sailors. You know that flag they signal with? Yeah. That's my shoit. <laughs> Reggie, let's be fair about this predicament. It would be unjust for a debutante of my social standing to enter into wedlock with any person whose financial status wasn't listed with Dunn and Bar Street. Oh, darling, please. <laughs> Dunn and Bar Street? <laughs> I'm not supposed to hear that, but I'm not going to let that one go. <laughs> Say, uh, I ain't got a nickel to my name, kid. Why, you cheap chisser. If you think I'm going to tie myself down to a shanty Irishman who can't got a nickel for a pair of socks, Huh. Ah, huh. shut up! <laughs> Your girlfriend's all told me you was Ah, uh, no button your lip, button your uh, lip. Yeah, eh. button your lip. <laughs> I don't blame you for feeling the way you do, dear, but please, let's not have this be farewell. I want you to have this token, this ring, oh, as oh. a memo of my love. No, I couldn't accept that. It'd be an obligation. Oh, but it is beautiful. But no, its beauty would tarnish with the memory of that is which is dear. Oh, please. Don't say anything you'll be sorry for. I wouldn't want it to sound mercenary. You know what, kid? I don't blame you for flying off the handle. Are you insinuating I'm a pot? I got two cents I'd not Ah, uh, wait a minute now. I wanted to give you something as a token of my, my esteem. Look, I've got something to remember you by. Yeah, but that black and blue mark will heal up in no time. <laughs> this is more permanent. This is something I brought, I bought down on, uh, Done in Bar Street. That's a ring? Yeah, that's a ring. You see that hole there? You can have a set put in there if you want to. Here, wear it. I won't wear it. Why? Turn my whole arm green. That'll match your complexion. <laughs> Somebody's got a line, isn't he? <laughs> I always figured you was a chiseling. This is goodbye, Reggie. I knew we shouldn't have parked here in the first place. It was too beautiful to last. If you don't mind, then, I think I'll get out and walk. 
Well, as you like. Goodbye, Reggie. Well, come on, let's get going. Take me home. I ain't taking you nowhere. You want to go anywhere, you walk. Come on, out of the car. Walk into a what? Yeah, you're wearing up the outpost ring. You're wearing it out. Come on. Now, where'd you get them shoes? <laughs> and I hope you get a flat tire. I got news for you. I just got rid of one. Hey, Bar Street. <laughs> I'll race you to the Macumbo. <laughs> <laughs> 